this video example, we are going to learn how to execute queries directly to the universe from SAP Business Objects dashboards. This is useful in many cases because we do not have to create a separate placeholder on the spreadsheet for externally loaded data. Here's an example dashboard with traditionally loaded data. We have created two data connections, one that loads the drop-down menu and another that loads the scorecard. We also require two placeholder areas in the spreadsheet to accomplish this. For the scorecard, we have the area in our data sheet, and for the year dropdown, we have the area right here on the control sheet. This looks simple right now because we only have two components on the canvas, but just imagine how the complexity increases as we get to 10 or more components. In addition, when loading data directly using the query browser, we're able to leverage the benefits of the dashboard caching server from business objects, which will improve query performance. Another benefit coming from the query browser is the ability to perform multiple selections. Using the traditional method, we need to use the list builder component. And if you notice, it takes up a lot of real estate as we have the source and destination windows, uh, the three buttons here, as well as the background. Also, um, when a user wants to do multi-select, they need to first select items on the source, then press add, and then press update, which is a total of three steps. Something more desirable would be similar to what we have on the list box, where users can control, select, or shift select their items here. All right, so now let's get started with the example. What we're gonna do in our example, uh, we're gonna have a combo box that allows users to select a year. And we're gonna have a column chart that will display internet sales based on the country. So a user is going to select a year and the column chart is going to populate with uh, country internet sales for that particular year. All right, so let's create our year query first, which will populate the drop-down menu. So if you don't already have your query browser window open, go to the menu and select view, then select query browser and let's go add query. It's gonna ask you to log into the business object system. We're going to then select the universe. And in this case, we're just gonna select calendar year. So usually once I'm finished building my query, I like to refresh my query on the bottom right. You'll notice that the 2001 appears many times. The reason for this is because we're doing something similar to select year from date table. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to return every year row coming from the date table. We have 365 days a year, so we're gonna get 365 rows for each year. If we keep the query like this, our drop-down menu is going to show 2001 repeated 365 times, 2002, and so on. So we need to change our query so that it looks something like this. Select distinct year from date table. To do that, we need to go into the query properties. And we want to uncheck retrieve duplicate rows. We also want to, as a best practice, name our query appropriately. So we're going to call it year selection. That way when I come back six months later, I'm going to know what each query does. I'm going to refresh again. 
I get distinct values, but my years aren't sorted in the right order that I want it to sort. I want it to sort descending. So I can do that too by clicking on the sort icon and then pressing the insert sort object. I'm going to sort by calendar year and then I'm going to sort it descending. Press OK. I'm going to go next. Sorted correctly. I'm going to go next again. On my usage options, I'm going to have refresh before components are loaded because I only need to refresh the uh, date values once and I don't need any triggers. I also don't need to have the load status show up so I don't need any load cursors or anything. I'm going to press OK and now we have our first query. I'm going to bind this query now to the drop down menu. You'll notice that some of the bind icons have a drop down beside. This means that we're able to bind query data to that particular binding. So for labels, we want to bind query data to the calendar year from the year selection query. If we run it, you'll see that I'm able to select the years now on my dropdown. Now let's build the query that's going to load the column chart. I'm going to go add query. region name sales amount and on my filter I'm going to filter based on selected year so I'm going to put the calendar year onto the filter and I'm going to select prompt go next fill out the prompt and then I'm going to go next again I'm going to uncheck the refresh components are loaded and technically I need a trigger cell but we haven't set that up so I'm going to press OK for now but we're going to come back to this query afterwards to set up the trigger alright so now we have the second query available. I want to load the column chart with the result objects from my second query. So in the column chart properties, you'll notice that the by range does not have a drop down beside the binding icon. This means that we need to manually add each series manually. Add a series. I'm going to call this sales amount. And then I'm going to bind the values sales amount and the category labels to country name. Now let's resize this a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. And we also need to bind the prompt so that we know what value is going into the prompt from the dropdown. So let's go to the data insertion area of the dropdown. I'm going to name this year prompt. Make sure the insertion type is label on the destination. I want to go to the second query and select the prompt. Okay, so now we're good with that. We also want to set up a trigger cell area. That way, this column chart knows to change whenever I change the value from the dropdown. So I'm gonna 
set up my trigger cell on sheet one. First, I'm going to name my sheet one to control sheet. I'm going to give it a title, a new selection, and I'm going to color cell in yellow. I'm going to add another data insertion item. We'll call this trigger cell. I'm going to put the insertion type to label and the destination we're going to link it to A2. All right, so we're almost there. We got to go back to the query now and set the trigger cell. So let's go back to the query. To edit the query, you can either select your query, right click and select edit, or select the query, press the edit button. I also noticed that we haven't renamed the query, so as a best practice, let's name the query to something that's user friendly. So let's call this one country sales. And go OK. Now for my usage options, I'm going to set my trigger cell to A2. And I'm going to enable the load cursor. That way, whenever I make a selection, I know that data is changing. Okay, let's preview this now. And go preview. And whenever I change the drop down, my data is going to reflect the correct values according to the year that I selected on the column chart. Okay, so that's how we do. Uh, single selection um, for data sets. Now we're going to do a quick example on how to do multi-select. So I'm going to drag a scorecard component onto the bottom. Drag the scorecard component. And we're just going to create a simple example where um, we're going to be able to select countries and depending on what countries we select, it's going to show the country and sales amount on the scorecard. So let's create a new query. Let's go to add query. The select uh, country name sales amount and on the filters I'm going to put country name here and then I'm going to put in list and prompt so we had on our previous query calendar year equal to prompt that means we can only select one item here we have in list so this is multiple items Go next. Let's select. I'll select one item. Let's go to run. Oops. Let's. I forgot to name the query. So, if I forgot to name a query, I can just press the back button, and I can go back to my query properties here. Name this multi select scorecard. On my usage options, uh, I'm going to uncheck refresh before components are loaded, but I'm going to keep enable load cursor checked. And there's no spe special trigger cells here, so I don't need to populate this. Let's go OK. And let's
let's set up the scorecard now. So on my display data, I'm going to select query data. And I'm going to select the items from the multi select scorecard query. All right, so now I need my uh, multi selector. So to get my multi selector, um, I'm going to go to universe connectivity and I'm going to drag on query prompt selector. Okay, first you need to select what your source prompt is going to be. So my source prompt is going to be the multiple selection for my country. Okay, so you can see how when I selected um, the multiple selection prompt for my countries, it changed to a list box looking type of selector. And it automatically sets my destination prompt as well as it automatically checks multi-select scorecard on the refresh queries area. So every time I make a change on the scorecard, uh, sorry, on the uh, multi-selector, it's going to refresh the multi-select scorecard query. Now on the bottom, we have two options. We can either use refresh when selection changes. You'll see that the apply button on the bottom right goes away. Or I can keep the button there by refresh on button click. I usually like to have refresh on button click selected because if I'm doing a control select and if I'm going through multiple items, I don't want the query to refresh every time. So let's just keep the refresh on button click, click selected. All right, so let's test this out now. I'm gonna go preview. Column chart still works okay. And let's test the multi-select now. So I'm gonna select Canada, Germany. And I'm going to select United Kingdom. So there we go. We have multiple selections. That's how we can use the query browser to grab data directly from the universe. Now let's talk about some limitations. When creating a data query using BI web services, you may recall that we have the ability to pivot data. So uh, from pivoting data, what I mean is the ability to put quarters as my columns and fruits as my rows. Unfortunately, with the query browser, everything comes through in tabular format. So we're not able to get um, something that looks like the following. Another feature that we do not have is the ability to schedule a data set that takes a long time to run. For example, if I had a query that takes two minutes to run, using BI Web Services, I can schedule the data set daily so that the user does not have to sit down and wait two minutes for a query to execute every time they open the dashboard. Other than that, the query browser is quite useful when retrieving external data, and I highly recommend it. I hope that this video provides a good overview of how to connect directly to the universe using SAP Business Objects dashboards. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to shoot me an email at david.lai at xinfinitysolutions.com.